in 2009, Boeing's Silent Eagle aimed to make the world's most prolific air superiority fighter into something more by injecting stealth into the F-15's legendary DNA. The result may have been the most broadly capable F-15 the world had ever seen, delivered just in time to compete with what would become a foreign sales powerhouse, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. The F-15 SE Silent Eagle aimed to bridge the gap between fourth and fifth generation fighters, incorporating elements of the stealth and situational awareness offered by the world's most advanced tactical jets into an already legendary fighter airframe. With 58,000 pounds of thrust on tap, internal weapons carriage capabilities, a reduced radar signature, advanced avionics, and the Strike Eagle's multi-role pedigree, this fighter may have been the most capable fourth-generation platform on the planet by the time it was rolled onto the flight lines of prospective buyers hailing from Canada to Japan and everywhere in between. But the world was changing by the 2010s, and the skies above it were no exception. In an era of advanced and stealthy fighters using data on the fly and slipping past enemy radar arrays like James Bond and his trusty Walther PPK, the Silent Eagle was more like Robocop carrying a shotgun with a silencer. It was a mechanical powerhouse that could tiptoe through the sky and speak in hushed tones. But beneath the thin veneer of stealth, the F-15 SE was still every bit the bruiser it started out as. Designed to square off against the fighter equivalent to the Bujiman, the F-15's journey to fruition started in the dogfights over Vietnam but found renewed focus when the Soviet Union unveiled the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-25 Foxbat at the Domodedovo airfield near Moscow in 1967. This new fighter was clearly fast, with massive air intakes defining its frontal view and engine outlets you could have a picnic in at the back. Based on their own studies of large wings on high-speed aircraft, the MiG-25's design looked highly maneuverable to American engineers, and concerns about its capabilities worsened just a few short years later when Israeli radar operators picked up an unusual Soviet fighter in their airspace traveling at an astonishing Mach 3.2 at higher altitudes than any NATO fighter could manage. The Air Force, keen to offset this apparent capability gap, redoubled their efforts to field a new purpose-built air superiority fighter, and they did so with the new Foxbat squarely in their crosshairs. Within just five years, America's new F-15 Eagle would enter service. It could fly at speeds in excess of Mach 2.5, thanks to a pair of powerful Pratt and Whitney F-100 PW-220 afterburning turbofans that actually produce more thrust than the aircraft's drag and weight combined to, making the F-15 so powerful that it can actually accelerate while flying straight up. That high thrust-to-weight ratio coupled with a low weight-to-wing area also allows for a high degree of maneuverability, making for what the Air Force hoped would be a superior combination of traits when compared to the Soviet powerhouse MiG-25. Of course, a few years later, America would get their hands on one and come to learn that the MiG-25 wasn't actually all that capable or scary at all. The F-15 had been invented to serve as a silver bullet against a monster Soviet fighter with seemingly no peers on the world stage. But with the Foxbat now understood to be a subpar competitor, America's F-15 graduated from its perceived underdog status to becoming the most dominant air superiority fighter of its century. In 1986, the next iteration Eagle, dubbed the F-15E, added new conformal fuel tanks along the aircraft's fuselage to carry an additional 750 gallons on each side, adorned with short pylons that can carry external munitions without the increased drag created by conventional weapons racks. Hard points for practically every air-to-ground munition in the U.S. arsenal were incorporated, from the Eagle's familiar AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles to America's latest variable-yield B-6112 nuclear bombs making the new Strike Eagle a competitor for best multi-role strike fighter of its century as well. In fact, the F-15E would beat out the unusual and extremely promising Delta-winged F-16XL for a shot at service. 
To coincide with the increased range and payload capabilities, new avionics, including improved radar and a low altitude navigation and targeting infrared for night, LANTIR system for air to ground targeting helped turn the air superiority fighter into a deep strike interdiction platform that had no need for escort fighters. In order to manage all of this, a second seat for a weapons officer was added with four screens displaying information from the radar, electronic warfare, or infrared sensors that can be used to track or select targets, monitor weapons, aid in navigation, and more.